Good morning, everybody. Give Facebook a few seconds to make sure that everybody know that I am I got a lot to tell you. Oh, so much going on. This is what I worked on last night. The next, I have three more of these to do, and that's the next time for my Hope Sisters. Check it out. And it's all clicked down in the back. So it goes um, pieced and quilted in the hoop. And then we just put sashing on the back to cover our unfinished edges. But I'm really loving how this is coming out. So I'm using three different jelly rolls. Not you need all the jelly rolls. But one of the three different colors of Northcott Shimmer. And the white, which will be the background all the way around the diamond um, star, is new hue, uh, Benetex New Hue in white with gold metallics. But I really like it. It's been one of those weeks. Today I am expecting all around town from Northcott, which is the boy version of the big almost two yard panel for play mats. The week I uh, already gotten the girls play mat in, which is called Greenland. And it's so cute. Okay. Yesterday we received our jingle all the way embellishment kits. Now, this is not oops, sorry. I thought I had sorry about that. I thought I um done that. Sorry. Okay. Let me explain this, okay? Jingle All the Way is not a new quilt. It's not a new CD. It's an old book before Kim and Bell started doing embellishment kits. So the quilt is not new. The fabric is almost impossible to find, just as an FYI. But you can reorder the book, which I have done, and the CD. And this is the embellishment kit, which, um, like I said, they didn't have before. Okay, so hopefully everybody gets that. Now, what is brand new is Kimberbell's Candy, uh, candy Cane Lane Bench Pillow and Embellishment Kit. See? Isn't it cute? I do have fabric kits for this. Problem is they haven't shipped yet. <laughs> now, it's two different companies. One is the fabric company and one is Kimberbell. So unfortunately, that's just the nature of the business. It's so cute. <laughs> And we've got um, On the Hook, which I think shipped, and I'll double check and let everybody know, but I think it is arriving next week, possibly. Let's see. Let's see if I can figure this out. Miss Nola woke me up at midnight last night, which is not late. She was barking, which she hasn't done at night. Um, yeah, I'll have to figure it out. I'll let you know exactly when the um, on the hook fabric is coming in. That's the metallic with sea life. Everybody is really excited about it, including me. Um. But back to Miss Nola. She hasn't been barking at night, but she heard something. Something got her riled up at midnight last night, and she was barking, which is not super late. But for someone who is up extremely early and takes me a long time to go back to sleep, it was not fun. I think I fell back to sleep somewhere around 1.30, quarter of 2. So it wasn't good. I have still do not know. I sent my husband out there to figure out what she was barking at. What are you going to do? All right, let's get started. 
This is week 34, and we have blocks 67 and 68. Two fairly simple blocks that I um, started doing a little bit of work on. Let's get back here. All right. Mm -hmm. We've set up again for you. Okay. I went ahead and did the half square triangle on this one because we've got another half square triangle in the next block that I can show you. All right, here we go. So here is block 67. We've got two half square triangles and two four patches. Now I've already done the half square triangle, but I will go over how that's done again in the next block. I'm gonna start with the four patch and just start chain piecing. Hi, Fran. How are you, Fran? What I'm going to do is continue to stitch without breaking my thread. All these neutrals and whites on whites, and it's sometimes very hard to tell what side is the right side. And it's getting worse the older I get because I can't see. <laughs> Whoever said getting old was not was good is a dingling. Getting old is not good. I want to be a teenager or in my early 20s, but know what I know now, then. Why not? I think it's a good idea. So now all I'm going to do is... Iron my four patches. Got so much going on. I spoke, or I should say, emailed uh, correspondence with Amanda Murphy for our frolic bloom pattern, trying to figure out when that is going to actually drop. And she is waiting for a final pattern from Benetex. And she's a little frustrated which I can understand. I've been trying, I really want to cut some kits for that quilt myself. But um, until I know for certain that the pattern is going to work, I won't cut the pattern. They've given me a, a you know requirement page for kits, but until you actually have the pattern confirmed, I don't like to cut the requirement kits because things change that's we're going to be using 108 inch wide fabric for the center of that quilt and i really don't want to cut that up and find out i'm wrong for a quarter yard or something like that so i'm on hold i hate being on hold all right So let's see. Now we have our four patch, and we've got four blocks here that make this diagonal that are the same fabric. What I did, and we've got two sets here that are two different, two, um, Different colors, even though they're hard to tell, but they're cream. They're a little bit darker than this white. So I have ironed all of my seams towards this light, this darker creamy color. What does that do? It allows me to set the seams and sandwich these seams nice and easy. So you've got... Top seam going that way, bottom seam going this way. Then, once I have a pin that is bent, 
they nest really, really nice. If you have a bulky seam, then they're not lined up. I'm gonna sew from here down. So my pin is on an angle like this so that I can stop right in the seam with my pin down before I pull the pin out. It's a minor thing, but it's something that I've learned over the years to stop my seams from misaligning. Sometimes just the act of taking the pin out is enough to adjust the seam. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. And you can feel it when you're doing these seams in opposite direction, you can feel it right up against each other and the seam is nice and flat. There's no bulk to it. You can see it. So again, top seam goes that way, bottom seam goes this way and both of them will butt up against each other creating the perfect alignment. Again, sewing from here down, pin is on an angle so that I can stop right in the seam with my needle down before I take the pin out. All right, now I'm gonna iron these to put the clock together. At this point, it doesn't matter which way the seam goes because there's no other seam alignment to worry about. Go. Now, all we're going to do, the only other seam alignment we're going to have is this one down here, along with this one. So we're going to sew these two together, sew these two blocks together, and then sew the two halves. Whichever side you decide to put your seam on, it, make sure you do it on both parts. Normally, the block will tell you whichever way it wants to have the seam. If it doesn't matter to you, don't fight it. And just let the seam go where it wants. I don't know why I cut that, but I did. A little bit quiet day today, which is okay. You, you need a quiet day once in a while. All right, so there's one, and I think it wants to go towards the half square triangle. There's two, so I'm going to iron these and then we'll put these together. There we go. So here's our block. We just got to uh, sew these two halves together. I have one seam going this way and the top seam going that way. 
I know this is a lot of repeat, but it really is a great, great quilt to master these little uh, I, uh, parts of quilting. And it's one that as long as your colors match, meaning the, the, well, the colored part, the scissor part of this quilt matches the seams line up. The rest of it doesn't really matter. On the neutral background part, if you're a little bit off, nobody's going to see it. All right. It's not perfect, but guess what? I'm good. I'm fine with it. There it is. That's block 67. Block 68. All right. Here is block 68, which is a quick and easy one, okay? We've got a small half square triangle. So you're going to end up having an extra because you don't need to. We've got both fabrics right sides together. And hopefully you can see I drew a line from this corner to this corner. And I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on each side of that line and then cut on that the line that I drew. And that's, how, that's one of the simplest ways to make a half square triangle. Okay, all I'm going to have to do now is cut on that line. And now I have two half square triangles. If you really, really wanted to, you could do a half square triangle, I mean, not a half square triangle, and just do a blue square here. That's okay too. But since it called for a half square triangle, that's what I did. I'm gonna put the other half square triangle in my extra. There you go. Okay. So all I'm gonna do is sew these two together. So this to this, and then this is this side long piece is the last piece. This is super, super simple. All of these blocks are very simple, which is a lovely thing. It's a great stash busting quilt. Not that you're gonna use a ton of stash, but this one's a great one to shop in your stash. And it's a really great quilt to learn to master lining up your seams, the quarter inch seam allowance. Now remember, if you're not 100% wonderful on a quarter inch seam. And guess what? There aren't too many people who quilt that are. It's okay. As long as you are consistent in your blocks through the whole quilt. It doesn't matter. It's going to go together. It's going to line up nicely. You just got to be consistent. Not necessarily consistent with a quarter of an inch, but just consistent throughout the quilt. Okay? Let me hold on. You'll get consistent and you'll get really good on your quarter of an inch seam whether with this quilt or with the next one, but with time. Just enjoy yourself, okay?
All right, come on. There's our first part. And I'm going to iron it towards the blue, just so I don't have a, a shadow. Can't always do that in this quilt because it just it's not feasible depending on what pieces you're piecing in the next block or in the row. But when you can, it's worth it. All right. Now, all we have to do is put this piece on the side and we're done. And you'll notice I don't do a lot of pinning. I just been doing it long enough that I only pin when I absolutely need to. There we go. There's block 68. And again, this one I'm going to iron towards the white. The white on the edge, not in the center of the block. There we go. All right. That was quick and easy this week. I like it when it's quick and easy. I'm, what, who am I kidding? Everything is easy. Why? I don't have the time, the patience, or the aggravation to do anything difficult. Just the way I am. All right. So we kept block 67 and block 68. That's all I have for you today. So if you have any questions, comments, um, you know where I am. And my hair is a mess today. It just doesn't want to work today. What can I say? All right. I hope you have a great day, Fran. And if you guys have any questions or comments, message me on Facebook, email me, or call me. You know where I am. Morning, Pat. I just finished. It was a quick one today. All right, you know where I am if you need me, everybody. Have a great day. Bye, Miss Pat.